Hello, and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We are in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 27, and we resume our study today in verse 45. So get your Bible, open it up to Matthew 27, and we'll begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is the place where you can study the whole Bible with me. Four series, Genesis through Revelation, verse by verse. This is an in-depth Bible study, in-depth Bible college education, with the emphasis completely and totally on Bible, which is perfect because the Bible has all the answers. And if you know the Word of God, you can be used by God. So study the whole counsel of God, which is also very important, with me at the Bible verse by verse dot com. Click and listen. That's all you have to do. <clears throat> and let's pray. Lord, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we actually looked at verse forty five last time, but that's okay. Let's read verse forty five and forty six. And it says, and about the, or from the, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? from forever in the past until this moment on the cross. The eternal Son had never been separated from the eternal Father, not for a second. They had unbroken, perfect fellowship until the cross. As a child, And as a man, the Father had always been there for his son, Jesus. When Jesus wanted to talk to the Father, the Father was there to listen. When Jesus in his humanity needed direction or some other kind of help, the Father was there to give him what he needed. When it it became time for him to choose his 12 apostles, he spent the night in prayer, talked to the Father about it, and the Father gave him direction. But no help came when Jesus was on the cross. Our sins were placed on Christ during those three hours, and when that happened, the Father broke fellowship with his Son. So, don't Tell me that someone who has not repented and received Jesus Christ into their life as their Lord and as their Savior, don't tell me that someone who has not repented and been forgiven by receiving Jesus Christ will spend eternity in heaven in the presence of God. That is a lie. Oh, it's a feel-good lie, but it's a lie nevertheless. It's not going to happen. There is absolutely no hope whatsoever for anyone who goes to their grave rejecting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I don't care if they did good things while they were in this world. It doesn't matter. They are dead. They are in hell. They will never get out. There's no hope for anybody who rejects Christ. If the Father would not have fellowship with his Son when he was carrying our sin on the cross, then he sure is not going to let anyone who has rejected his mercy through his Son be with him in heaven. Close the book on that person. It may be your mother or your child or your husband or your wife or your best friend. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Let's be honest about this. 
They made their choice. They rejected Christ. They rejected God. You continue to serve God and Christ because he's worthy of it no matter who rejects, but there's no hope for that person, zero. And that's why it's so important to get the word of God out straight. That's why I'm saying what I'm saying here. I know this is an unpopular thing to say, probably very unpopular, mostly with the modern evangelicals. They would never say anything like this. And that's why God doesn't use them. That's why no one ever gets saved through their preaching or through their teaching. But people can get saved through this because I'm telling them the truth of God's word. And they realize they're brought face to face with the fact they're in big trouble. And their loved ones are in big trouble. I need to tell their loved ones about Jesus and not let them slip into eternity without at least having a chance to receive him. Verse 46, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And I believe, truly I do, that this was the worst part of Jesus' sufferings. I mean, it was bad when Judas betrayed him. It was bad when Peter denied him three times. It was bad when they ripped his flesh right down to the bones. It was bad when he was mocked, punched, hit over the head with a rod and spit on. But Jesus never said, why? He never said why through any of those horrible things. He never said why until the father left him. That was by far the worst part of this entire nightmare for Jesus. 47, some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calleth for Elias. Eli sounds like Elijah. So some of the people thought that Jesus was calling for the Old Testament prophet Elijah to come and save him. 48, and straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar, wine vinegar that is, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. They gave him a drink, not because they cared about him, but because they don't want him to pass out or die. Not yet anyway. They were having too much fun at Jesus' expense, man. This was like a, a great circus act. Oh, this is a good time. They pay money to watch this. He was interesting. And they wanted to keep this thing going. This was a form of morbid entertainment for the bystanders. 49. The rest said, let be. Let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. Too late. He dies. Or rather, he yielded up the ghost. Those translations, those modern translations that say Jesus died are wrong. They're giving you the wrong impression. They're misrepresenting what happened. Jesus released his spirit. He said earlier, no one takes my life. I give it of my own free will. He didn't die at the hands of these people. Oh, yeah, they were his instruments of suffering. But he died when he released his spirit. Nobody else can do that except God, Jesus. But it's too late. Their entertainment is over. He dies. The Bible says, there is a time to be born and a time to die. The, the time for you to die will come. The time for me to die will come. You've watched friends, perhaps, loved ones, maybe your mother or father, or grandmother, grandfather die. Their time came. You were there. You were present. I was there. When my dad took his final breath, 
We will die. Because as sinners, we must. Jesus died because he chose to die for our sins. It says he yielded up his spirit. All the pain and the torture that Jesus went through was voluntarily done for our benefit. He yielded up his spirit. And then notice in verse 51, and this is huge. You got to get this one. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Notice again, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom. There were three parts to the holy temple in Jerusalem, according to God's design. Part one was the outer court. Part two was the holy place. Part three was the most holy place. The most holy place was separated from the rest of the temple 